And just before we go to a short break, it's very important to take a look at the Australian Olympic Committee's spineless approach to next year's Winter Olympics in Beijing. Australia has committed to appearing at the Winter Olympics in China next year, with AOC President John Coates stating, the IOC's remit is to ensure that there is no human rights abuses in respect of the conduct of the Games within the National Olympic Committee, or within the Olympic movement. We have no ability to go into a country and tell them what to do. We are not a world government. We have to respect the sovereignty of the countries who are hosting the Games. Let that sink in. We have to respect the sovereignty of the countries who are hosting the Games. Sovereignty is actually a pretty good word here. An individual sovereignty is the concept of property in one's own person, expressed as the moral or natural right of a person to have bodily integrity and be the exclusive controller of one's own body and life. Now, do you believe the people in China have individual sovereignty? Would you say that living in a surveillance state that operates on a social credit system provides for sovereignty? Let's take the example of journalist Liu Hu, who is writing about censorship and government corruption. Now, because of his work, Liu has been arrested and fined and blacklisted in accordance with the social credit system. Liu has now been named on a list of dishonest persons subject to enforcement by the Supreme People's Court as not qualified to buy a plane ticket to purchase property, to take out a loan, or even to travel on certain train lines. Now that's just Chinese citizens. For others, conditions are actually even worse. Take Uyghur Muslims in China, for example. A vast swath of human rights groups believe China has detained more than one million Uyghur Muslims against their will over the past few years in a large network of what the state calls re-education camps. I'm not kidding. Hundreds of thousands more have been sent straight to prison there's also evidence that Uyghurs are being used for forced labour, that they're subject to horrific violence, torture and sexual abuse. But what's that that John Coates says? Ah yes, we have to respect the sovereignty of the countries who are hosting the Games. Yeah. How about the sovereignty then of North Korea? After all, China is the country that continues to fund through weapons and other supplies Kim Jong-un's dictatorship that is people starving in the streets, killed if they dissent against their leader and has an agreement to turn back deserters knowing full well their fate is death. China is also the same country that has unleashed coronavirus into the world. Increasingly, there's now evidence the virus came from a lab. But regardless of your thoughts on its origins and the intentions surrounding the virus itself, China did indeed engage in a campaign of covering up information in the early stages, actively allowing its people to travel to other countries knowing there was an issue, and then of course conspired with the World Health Organization to downplay the seriousness of the virus in the early stages which has now, oh, what's that? Killed millions of people, destroyed lives, and has forced people like you and I to endure two years of utter crap. Not to mention their increasing aggression in the Pacific, the slaughter of protesters in Hong Kong, and their ongoing war against Taiwan. Let's be very clear. This is a hostile nation, and one that we should have zero respect for. But to John Coates, it's, quote, a badge of honour that only Australia and Greece have attended every game since 1896. So he intends to continue that streak, regardless of the moral cost or the precedent that it sets. It's not a badge of honour to support a nation that engages in the acts that China does. Countries and their athletes have stood up in the past, and Australia should do so here. The 1976 Montreal Games featured more than two dozen African nations participating in a boycott after the IOC refused to ban New Zealand whose rugby team had ignored an international sporting embargo to tour the apartheid state of South Africa. Four years later, the US led a boycott of the Moscow Olympics to protest the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Which, coincidentally, brings me to Afghanistan. Over the past month, the IOC helped around 100 members of the Olympic community in Afghanistan to flee the country on humanitarian visas after the Taliban took over. Now, John Coates has stated that the work the IOC is doing in that scenario is within our remit. The situations that you have referred to, the humanitarian ones in China, is not within our remit. Mr Coates, no one is suggesting that you lead our team of 41 athletes over to China, pick up arms and free those that are persecuted. What is within your remit though, is taking a stand for the greater good. For our athletes, it is a shocking waste of their hard work over the past four years to not be rewarded with competition. But 
many of the game's biggest victories for athletes as well are not measured in meters or in seconds. They're measured by moments. Moments that matter more in the history of sport that help ingrain the fabric of fair play, good sportsmanship, and honor the legacy of competition.